Hello and welcome to Antipedia. Today's lesson will cover the basics of symmetric key encryption. Come with us. Alice, I have a letter with a secret message that I want to send to a friend but I'm afraid someone might open it and read the content. What can I do to prevent this from happening? You could use this safety box. Put the letter inside and send the box to your friend. Well, it looks quite sturdy. But what if someone is able to open it up and steal the letter? Don't worry. To avoid that, we will close it with this combination lock. See? This way. Only the person who knows the combination will be able to open the box and read the letter. Are you sure no one will be able to open it without knowing the combination? Of course they won't. It has been designed by the world's most important expert in locks. It's totally indestructible. If someone forgets the combination, no one will be able to open it. And can't someone try all the combinations until they find the correct one you're right that could be a problem in order to avoid that the lock uses an eight digit combination which means that there are 10 to the power of eight possible combinations or in other words 100 million combinations do you think those are enough of course Bob Look, if it takes 10 seconds to try each combination, it would take you 31 years to try them all. You'd have to try out an average of half the combinations to find it. So getting the right combination would take over 15 years without stopping to eat, sleep or go to the bathroom. Oh, my, it does look pretty secure. You've convinced me Alice. I think I'm going to send a letter to my friend inside the safety box with that wonderful lock now that I'm sure nobody will be able to open it up and read my letter without knowing the combination. Hi Alice, now I want to send an online message to a friend of mine making sure that no one can read it but I'm not sure how to do it. I don't think I'll be able to use the method with the box and the lock or a digital message. A physical lock won't work on the internet, but you can use the digital equivalent to the lock. Really? I didn't know there were digital locks. Cryptography would be the equivalent to the lock and its combination. How is that possible? Well, when you want to protect a digital message, you can encrypt it using a cryptographic algorithm. In the same way that there are many types of locks, there are also many types of cryptographic algorithms to encrypt email messages files from a hard drive, information from a database and, in general, to encrypt large amounts of data. A special type of cryptographic algorithm is used, the symmetric key algorithm, also known as secret key encryption. And why is it called symmetric? Because it uses the same key for encrypting and for decrypting a message. So, if I encrypt a message using a symmetric algorithm, only the person who knows the key I have used will be able to decipher it. Is that right? Exactly. And isn't there any chance that my message could get deciphered by someone that doesn't know my secret key? Well, that depends on two factors. The first one being the strength of the algorithm. And what does the algorithm's strength depend on? It depends on the way in which it has been designed. As we have seen in the first lesson of Antipedia over many centuries, two types of ciphering methods were used, substitution and transposition. That's true. Furthermore, substitution and permutation weren't enough on their own to cipher a text securely of course but the strength of the algorithm can improve largely if both operations are combined using substitution and transposition repeatedly throughout the same message modern cipher algorithms like triple des or aes use several rounds of ciphering in which both operations are combined what do they do that for their aim is to achieve confusion and diffusion alice i'm confused Look Bob, a cipher text should ideally have a totally random appearance. As if a monkey had sat on a typewriter. <laughs> yes, that's it. Any pattern or clue should disappear from the message, which means that you shouldn't be able to see any statistical relationship between the original message and the cipher text. 
The combination of substitution and transposition diffuses, distributing the statistical structure of the message throughout the cipher text. Oh, now I understand diffusion. It hides the connection between the plain text and the cipher text. So what is confusion for? Since the cryptanalyst will normally have the cipher text and would know how the encryption algorithm used for ciphering works. He will try to come up with the secret key. Confusion tries to hide the connection between the cipher text and the secret key. So, what would happen if only one bit of the key was changed? In that case, half the bits of the cipher text would change in average. Cipher algorithms that use confusion and diffusion are usually known as product ciphers. Each application of confusion and diffusion takes place in a cipher round. Modern cipher algorithms use several rounds of ciphering, which are also called iterations. So, if an algorithm is designed properly, we would have the same result as with the combination lock. Only knowing the key will allow the message to be deciphered. Yes, that's it. Good cryptography practice always follow Kurchkov's principle. A crypto system should be secure, even if everything about the system, except the key, is public knowledge. In other words, like Claude Shannon said, the enemy knows the system. Could the attacker try all the possible values of the key? Remember I told you before that the security of an algorithm depended on two factors? We've already seen the first one. It's the algorithm's design. The second factor is the length of the key. When a cryptanalyst is unable to find any weakness in the algorithm, he can opt to carry out a brute force attack. This method doesn't attack the algorithm directly. Instead, it searches systematically all possible keys until the correct key is found. And do you remember now the 8-digit lock, which had 100 million possible combinations? They were so many, that trying them by hand would take too many years. But, of course, encryption algorithm keys aren't searched manually, like with the combination lock. The work is done by a computer. And since computers are faster than humans, bigger keys are needed. Absolutely. That is why it is important to choose keys that are long enough to make it impossible to try them all in a reasonable amount of time. Using the current computational power, this was the problem with the DES symmetric key algorithm, which used a 56-bit key. The data encryption standard was designed in 1976, and then, it was unimaginable that a computer could be able to try 2 to the power of 56 possible combinations, but, of course, computing continued. Developing and in 1998, a machine capable of finding out the key in 56 hours was designed. Continued progress in parallel computing has managed, since then, to reduce this time to less than a day. Nowadays, a symmetric key with that size is totally insecure. So what size should a key have in order to be safe from brute force attacks? Today, 128-bit keys have a guaranteed security for many years to come, in fact, some algorithms allow you to choose the key size, like the advanced encryption standard, based on the regional cipher. Each bit added to the key doubles the size of the possible key space. Does this mean that if the design is strong and the key size is long enough, we can say that the algorithm is secure? Yes, in theory. Alice. I've encrypted the message using the secret key, but I have a problem now. How do I send my friend the secret key that I've used to encrypt my message? Bob, that is one of the major problems that cryptography has faced in history. This problem is called key distribution. What is the point of using the best cipher algorithm in the world if I can share my key with the recipient of the message? You got it. That's the idea. Over many centuries, cryptography has faced this issue with little success until public key cryptography was invented in the 70s. And how does that type of cryptography work? Patience, Bob. We will get to that in our next lesson. We have already learned many things for today covering the basics of symmetric key encryption. At the Entirepedia website, you will be able to find additional information. See you at our next lesson. Goodbye.